I'll start talking about OPRA, but we'll, we'll get to the meetings after. Uh, so, how do you use OPRA? Does anyone know? Seriously. How do you use OPRA? Get documents you like. Yes, ma'am. Fill out the form, and um, well, it depends if there's a local municipality or the city clerk's office, you can go to OPRA request for it. You're, it's all online. Right. You know, that, that, that's, that's exactly right. The, the only thing, what's interesting is, OPRA doesn't require you to fill out a form. Uh, so if you have clerks who are telling you you have to fill out our form, you don't have to fill out the form. And yes, they do tell us that. Yes. Yeah, I, actually, the, the person whose case said that is in this room. That's, that's Tina. It was, it was Rena versus Union County, uh, where Tina was represented by a, a, a colleague of mine, Rick Upman, and Union County wanted Tina to fill out their OPRA form, and Tina said, said no. And, and they went to the appellate division, which is New Jersey's sort of middle court, you know, the trial courts, you know, the Supreme Court in the middle of the appellate division. So I went to the appellate division, the appellate division said, we agree, you do not have to fill out a form. Um, why is that important? Well, you're allowed to make OPA requests by fax, by email, in person, or by the mail. And it may not always be convenient to fill out the form. The most important thing about your OPA requests is that they be in writing, and that they mention OPA. If you don't mention OPA, then you're, you're, you're out of luck. Uh, I mean, you're not out of luck in the sense you can't just fix it, just do a new one. But you have to mention OPA and you have to give the clerk enough information for him or her to reach you. So, you know, an email address, uh, home address, however you want to be reached, but you don't have to fill out the form. So we go to our town hall clerk and tell them we want to be notified. I'm sorry, you want to be notified? I'm, I'm not, I don't understand. For the open records, we want to be uh, yeah, yeah, notified of anything going on. Isn't that what this is about? Um, not, not exactly. Uh, when you make an OPA request, in writing but not on the form, uh, you have to request specific records. You have to be specific about the types of records you want. Um, I, I think there's a procedure, and I don't know it because I have never used it, never had to use it. I think there's a procedure where you can request the clerk email you notices about meetings, but it's usually pretty easy to figure out when meetings are. Most places have the meeting schedule on the internet. Um, but there's, I, I can't think of a, of, a, of a statute or rule that says, well, they have to tell you about things as they happen. No. Uh, you make your open request, you make it in writing, you can hand deliver it, you can email it, you can fax it. Now. Now, there, there are some interesting limits on how you can make your OPA request. There's some places, and some of them are, are, are close to here, there's some places that say you can't fax or email us an OPA request. It has to be hand-delivered or mailed. And that position was recently rejected by, 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 an, by a, a government agency called the GRC. Uh, there's court, then there's the GRC. Both issue opinions uh, and both enforce OPRA. So for, for a couple of years, and this was one of my cases that I lost actually, um, court said that if a records custodian said, we only accept OPRA requests by facsimile, that was proper. But recently there was a change. Uh, so if you have a public agency that says, we only accept OPRA requests by uh, mail, that's wrong, that's not the law. The law is, they have to have a hard copy way of accepting OPA requests, and they have to have an electronic way. So they can do fax or email, but it has to be one or the other. They can't just say, you know, we're not, we're not accepting anything electronic. 